What's up guys? My name is Richmond and I'm the OT Dude. Today, we will talk about postural stability and balance. What is postural stability? Postural stability is the ability of our neck and upper body to maintain a stable position so that our arms and legs are free to move, while our head is in an optimal position for effective visual function. Balance is divided into two. There's static and dynamic. Static is holding your posture in a still position or not moving. Dynamic is controlling your posture while you're moving. So why is this important? Good postural stability and balance is needed for efficient movement control. All gross motor movements require a stable core. The stronger your core is, it's easier for you to move your arms and legs. However, if your core is not that strong or stable, you'd easily get tired when you use your arms and legs for daily activities. That's why it's very important to strengthen your core first before we target other motor skills such as fine motor skills. So how do you know if there's a problem with postural stability and balance? There's difficulty in hopping, skipping, jumping, or when changing directions, and the movement isn't fluid. There's difficulty in walking in uneven surfaces, such as going up the stairs, going down the stairs, or going over curbs. There's difficulty sitting on the floor or on the chair. You'd see the child slip, slouch, fidget, or fall, especially without a backrest. There's difficulty maintaining personal space. There's difficulty performing activities of daily living skills such as brushing your teeth, taking a bath, dressing, or feeding. There's difficulty in performing functional tasks such as opening the door, putting objects overhead, or writing across the board. And kids who do the W sitting position. It's this position. So this is because their core is weak and so they resort to a position that's stable or comfortable for them, but in the long run, it's not good. Why? Because it makes their muscles in the legs and hips really tight, and it inhibits their normal range of motion. So what are activities that we can do to help develop postural stability and balance? Activity number one, you will need bean bags, small toys, and rings. Ask your child to pick up the bean bags or small toys with his toes or placing the small object or bean bag on top of his toes and transferring it into a bucket or shooting it in a container while maintaining balance. Or you can use rings. You can ask your child to pick it up with his toes again or through his toes and shoot it. For activity number two, you will need stickers or tape. Place the stickers or tape under his feet and ask him or her to remove it while maintaining his balance. For activity number three, you will need a throw pillow. Ask your child to kneel down on the pillow on the floor and gently push him from side to side, front and back. Instruct him to maintain a stable position and he shouldn't fall. For activity number four, we will make our own balance beam. You'd need masking tape or chalk. So you can either draw or Place the tape on the floor in a straight line, zigzag, or any pattern that you want. And ask your child to walk on the line with one foot over the other and maintaining balance. For activity number five, we will need a book or a toy. Place the book on top of the head and ask your child to walk around the room while maintaining a stable position and the book should not fall down. For activity number six, walking on uneven surfaces. You can use stairs, just a few flights going up and down, or walk on throw pillows. For activity number seven, reaching and shooting. Ask him to stand on an elevated surface or a throw pillow. Ask him to reach overhead and shoot down below. For activity number eight, play catch and throw while he or she is standing on a throw pillow or an elevated area or an taped area where he or she should just stay in that position. Activity number nine is ball roll. Ask him to use one foot to maneuver the ball from left to right, front, forward in many different directions, and then change to the other foot, do the same thing. For activity number 10, present different sized objects in terms of height and ask your child to tap his toes alternately. Now remember, always safety first. Make sure that the environment is safe it's well lit, there are no slippery surfaces, and there are no sharp edges. If you want to grade the level of difficulty, you can change two things, the base of support and surface height. 
per base of support, the wider it is, the more stable it will be. If you want it to be more challenging, it should be narrower. For the surface area, the higher it is, the more challenging it is because you're working against gravity. That's it guys! Thanks for watching! If you like this video, smash the like button, hit subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more content like this. Thank you and have a good day!